The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here on this Friday, October the 15th. Let me just check something out here. Yeah, it's October the 15th, the 1 8 15. So, one, two, three. This is options expiration day as well. So, we, we, we'll have to watch until 2 15 to 2 50 this afternoon. Decent time to see what happens if there's any sell off. Based on the uh, the options expiration, we'll see. All right, we're looking at the Dow of 337 at 35,250. That Wednesday slump was a really tough day I, for subscribers. I'm hoping to call. I really wanted to. We've been trying to go long uh, for. Uh, we've done it many times now. We try to do it. Just got taken out, and then the market. And each time it gaps like that, it's real tough to buy the gap up. Because I was looking at this resistance, Chap Wave inside track resistance or repellent line right here. And we went right to the door yesterday. And then what happened is today we gap up and look at this green candle so far. And I have to suggest to you that within within the Chap Wave methodology, even though the stochastic is at 63% and not at 80% 80, 80 or higher, because the nine period moving average yesterday, as we were talking, remember I said we've, we've crossed positive, and that suggests that uh, the nine period moving average will turn green, a positive move above the 14 period moving average. This, and the on balance volume is lagging a lot, the stochastics lagging a lot. The relative strength is quite good. It's not great, it's just it's good. I do have to consider that this is now a buy signal that's going to a daily buy mode. And that might impact, we'll see what happens at the close today, that might impact a gray leg B in the weekly chart because trading at 35,262, we're only an eye blink away from an all-time high, 400 points and you're up 450 or so, and you're at an all-time high. So that's one of the reasons why I said that I always love to use the nine period exponential moving average uh, in this case, you're looking at it in the weekly chart, still positive, never went, not, not even inch a week. Did it go negative at all? And it's held very nicely. So in that context, and that's one of the reasons why we wanted to maintain our longer term, long positions. So basically, we saw it on March 23rd of last year. And we did manage to get short via the DOG on the downside, about 200 points off the top. Of the all-time high, uh, and we traded it down. But uh, now we're looking at the chance that you've you've made some kind of internal low. We have to wait for the residual low. Now, I also used I like to use since this is technical Friday in the Chevrolet methodology. Let's go through things very very carefully here. I know a lot of you asked me what uh, what's the story? Are we are we turning around slowly, sector by sector, and maybe have to have one big sell-off to, to just really get the nervous Nellies uh, very negative and then turn up? Or is it going to be a rally now and then all of a sudden we start to, all these uh, sundry, all these, like at this point we can call them sundry, but at this point we're also looking at the interest rate factor. It isn't really a factor anymore. The um, COVID factor, yes, it is a factor, but actually when you, I don't know about you, but going around, there are people that are out, and yep, people are either wearing masks, most are wearing masks if they need to when they're going to public places. Um, yeah, things are just starting to become normalized, but let's look at the chart formation. If you're looking at the volatility index when it spiraled higher, that was, I think, the 19th of uh, September, it went to a leg D and then a peak D at 28.79. That one wasn't one of the highest levels. This is one of the highest levels in a while. But of course, we've been up in the 30s and 40s and even higher. We went to 85 back in 2020 at the bottom, March 23rd. So 
hitting 28.79, basically, you're looking at rates, you're looking at China, you're looking at oil, you're looking at the debt ceiling. Some of that's been ameliorated. So the big thing here is that people have become somewhat used to putting money into the market. This is the first time. Remember, for years I've been saying, has anybody even mentioned the stock market when you had parties, anything like that? I think for the first time now, people are actually starting to discuss it. They might not mention any stocks in particular, but they're starting to look at it more positively. And to become really negative about something, you really have to be hurt badly. And I don't think at this point, we've seen the kind of smash to the downside. So I see residual strength in the general market, very specifically in certain areas. But at the same time, I mean, I'm looking for my subscribers. I'm looking at a portfolio today. Um, some really nice moves, good percentage moves. And uh, all, all I can say is you have to be quite specific and it's going to work. Sometimes it won't work. We had one that didn't work the other day, but mostly we've got things that have been working. And if you look at the volatility index that peak D with an arch formation says that we're at 15.87. So everything's changed. I had to completely modify uh, I had to completely modify the numbers that I used on the VIX index because of COVID. I suspect that I might have to start using that same thing in my Chapman Wave Chun gauge. I had a, a reading that suggested that on Monday there should be early weakness to negativity in the Dow before a rally is uh, attempted. And if that'll work, it does get twisted sometimes in options expiration day third Friday of the week. That's the monthly options. So looking at this, I suggest to you <clears throat> that the volatility index just cascading from the 24s to the 15s, almost being cut in half, is suggesting that more and more, not general people, but more and more fund managers are starting to put money to work. Maybe very quietly, not talking about it too much because they're not really sure if we, we're done going down. And I, I, all, all I can say is, can you really be sure of being done going down? I mean, all of a sudden people are talking about Taiwan. You know, you start to include Taiwan in the mix as opposed to uh, uh, the very, very poor uh, earnings reports that are coming out of China. That's something completely different. It becomes a political, geopolitical aspect. So I don't even want to get into that. I'm just saying that at this particular level, the fear of, and I, I suspect, once again, I've got to look at this as fund managers because you need big volume to get that VIX uh, pushing much higher. I just don't think it's there right now. So it says we could go a little higher. And then I suspect we start to bump into you know, the bad news comes back again, specifically, who knows what it'll be. But so far, this is good. So I want you to show, say that the volatility index under the 16s, probably I'll say under 17.50, let's say under the 17s, is not bad. Popping up again to the 19.50 to the 20.50 area says, uh-oh, volatility is going to come back in, meaning going down. So that's what we're looking at. So now I want to just go quickly, as we're, as we're wrapping up this segment, let me just quickly say, here's the S&P extending in this one-to-one -to, -one to the upside, the QQQ, one, two, three, is trying to break out, it's, it's, it's tough. And I'll be back in a moment because we also want to include the semiconductor index and many other things. How's it trap? I how it does it. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So, yep, I got a, uh, quite a number of questions that came in last night and, and uh, now today. I'll, I'll get to them. We will look at GPK. But let me just finish up here. I want you to say, look, gold had a really, really strong move. It's holding the 9 and 14 period moving average. I think it's in play, and I suspect that the uh, 1803 area is going to be the big test. That's just above yesterday's high. Pull back sharply today. It's down 21. But I do think it's in play. Now, I don't think it's in play like a Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is the one that I said in a bigger time frame. It's fantastic. It is. Uh, we still have a small position on the 12,400s based on the GBTC Bitcoin uh, trust. But at this particular point, look, leg C in the daily, <clears throat> leg C in the weekly. I should call it the gray leg C because we haven't gone above 80% in the stochastic, but it's 79.66. I'm going to say there's a good chance this is a buy mode and that we're going to try to, re to retest the high that was made back in April, the week of the 16th at 66.310. Let me just type that in, 66.310. And we are now at... Uh, 60,710. So I suspect that's doable. And I also believe we're going to go to a leg D in the monthly chart. I had a question from uh, actually a couple of subscribers. How come I've been favorable to the to the Bitcoin, but I haven't gone long, I gone back to long, uh, adding back to some of the parts that we've taken off in the BT, uh, GBTC, the Bitcoin trust? And the answer is, because the trust trades doesn't trade overnight. And I needed to know, look, look how sharp these moves have been. And if it gaps down, you can get taken out and then it suddenly turns around intraday. So I just I didn't see it as a risk reward until three days ago. And then once it had that big candle and I hadn't already gone in, I I just said leg C. And even now in leg C, what do I do? I play it for just a leg D to the upside. Well, the chances are it's going to try to get back into the Bitcoin, back into the 50-80-ish area that was the most recent high back in um, March. Yeah, March. And um, so I'll have to think about that. But yeah, it was an opportunity that I, I didn't take. I should have taken it. So going back now, look at the silver. Silver chart is holding quite nicely. And this is just telling me that as tradables, as intraday trading, getting back to the sh shorter term uh, uh, parameters that we look at, silver and gold are, are 
probably moving towards the upside. They're probably bumping to some resistance very soon. But I like it as a longer term play. I just don't know yet whether this is all I can say is you get in and then you have to deal with it as it moves along. Because why? Look, the dollar is still holding very nicely. Look at this. It's still up near the highs at 94. Um, just over 94.50 was uh, the high four days ago. Um, it's holding very well. It's not breaking down. And I have to consider this is a possible leg F or an alternate count in the weekly chart. I'm calling it F for now, saying I think the dollar is becoming a little bit vulnerable to a sideways consolidation. So I'm trying to put the package together. I'm saying be specific because, look, high-grade copper, spectacular move from the $4 area to 472, 478 today. Um, that's that is such a good sign economically that I can't dismiss it and put that together with wood, which moves slower, but I still still acting quite nicely. That's the I shapes, the global timber and forestry ETF. I like what I'm seeing, but that's not yet done with its consolidation. So this is such a mixed picture; it's incredible. So um, I, I, I got to get to some questions in a moment. Uh, but let me just do this. I wanted to show you the TLT is now pulling back a little bit. Uh, it's down 99 cents at 144.89. If the TLT is able to get into the 147.80s, I'd prefer a close there, but even touch the 147.80s. I think that's going to suggest the yields are not really an issue anymore. It's just they're stuck in a range and they won't go higher, at least in this particular phase that we're talking about right now. If the TLT suddenly starts to trade, for a couple of days below 130, sorry, 143, uh, that's going to suggest those yields are still an issue and they're not yet uh, finished rallying. Uh, that's all the way I can, it's the only way I can look at it. So, just quickly again, crude oil, uh, go on to a leg D, that's that alternate count. Now it works, you get to yourself, get to a D, I like that. Leg D in the, in the daily chart, leg D slash B, I wouldn't be surprised if this is still a B, just a B in the weekly chart. Nice one-to-one -one breakout from the Chapman Wave, falling axe formation, leg D. So all these techniques and all these, the different areas and the different stocks and categories that we want to look at, I'll be doing in great detail in my webinar coming up on Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, the 19th, 19th of October. Some of you remember October the 19th, 1987. I don't like to dwell on that. It was an incredible day. Um, I, because I hand charted, I was able to do my, my I, I had a hotline, I was able to do my hotline the very next day and say, said, I believe that within uh, six, 18 months, I said, within 18 months, we should be at all time highs, good buying opportunity with all the round numbers in General Motors, General Electric, uh, the, um, uh, United Technologies, DuPont, etc. So, all right, in the meantime, back at the ranch on the 19th, I'll be doing this and I'll be showing you. What are we looking at? There are so many really good stocks. I mean, look at this. Uh, SQ. Didn't get into SQ uh, Square. It's a fantastic company. Big consolidation. When you want to get into or back into some of these stocks that have been absolutely superb, have a superb business identity and, and certainly earnings. Um, but it, I've had a big digestive phase in the daily and weekly charts, but not in the monthly charts. And they still look very good. I want to discuss that. I mean, and you can send me through at Basil Chapman at TFNN.com. Send me your requests. This is where I do want to do spend a little time on on, on stocks and, and, and ETFs that you're really interested in. And I'm also interested in many of those. When you become back into the MJ, MJ is the uh, MJ Alternate Harvest ETF, cannabis sector. I'm going to be discussing a lot of things. IYT. Struggle, 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 and finally it's having spectacular week. Um, it's up at 260 after making a low of 241. That's 10%, and it's a leg A in the weekly chart and the monthly had that peak B. It still doesn't look like it's ready to do anything spectacular, but this is a fantastic bounce of an oversold condition. So now I've done that. Now let's go through these things. Um, all right, someone asked me, could I? Uh, let's see, Greg. If I can find it, A E H R A E H R. I got this after my show was done yesterday. So this is A E H R test systems. I don't know what they test. I forgot to look it up. Um, leg. I'm calling this a leg F in the monthly chart, but because it's been so spectacular, I think that's wrong. I think this is actually just an F slash B, and it's going to go much higher. 
you, you, uh, under these market conditions, you can't have a stock like this screaming to higher highs with green candles for four months when we've had uh, a, a pretty big consolidation in many areas. So I'm calling this F slash B. Yeah, I am calling it an E in the weekly chart, and I didn't quite finish the uh, daily chart, but let me just do a couple of things here. So the question, oh, I can't get that question. Can I get that question? Uh, great, let me just tack that in. I hope it comes up. Uh, oh, we've got a break coming. All right, during the break, I'll check it out because it was a nice question. I believe that you were in. Yes, I'll do that. So the Dow is coming back a little bit. My short my short time. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we've got tons and tons of questions coming in. So let me just do this. Um, AEHR, uh, this particular pattern that I'm looking at right here says just on a very short, oh, well, the question was, morning, Basil, could, this was yesterday. Could you look at AEHR? I'm in at 1189 and took a small bit off yesterday. I think we have a restart on 922. I'm going to talk about that. If it is a restart, uh, what do you use as the low? What do you think? I would like to hold long term if the market lets me. Where would you rebuy or add? Thanks, Greg. So let's just make it as simple as possible. 
The MACD is good in the daily. Stochastic's flat at 91%. I mean, that's that's great. The, um, the on-balance volume is overbought, but that is very short-term, so they could see a pullback. Relative strength is really very strong. I like this very much. What I, I would say to you, put in a bid below the low of um, the 8th, which had a gap up low of 1753, and the day before the high was 1671. So somewhere in there, I'd look to to put money back to work uh, or just increase what, what position I have. One of the reasons is, so the question is, uh, where are we in the Chapman Wave methodology? I've called this an E and an F, but technically the MACD and everything holding so good says that I probably should call this an alternate count. Remember, the alternate count says if you're in something or if you're looking at it or what to do, the alternate count is the, it just says it could be this or it could be that. It doesn't mean to change anything. It just says if it's an F, you've got to be a bit careful because it could pull back. If it's a B, it's really positive because any pullback you want to buy. But that's only one part of the puzzle. The other part of the puzzle is the 9 is way above the 14, and that's at 18, that's uh, 56 as support, and 17.26 is the next in the, in the 14 period moving average. And everything here is very strong. So I don't want to get carried away and say, oh, my God, this is either a spectacular move, one to one to the upside, or anything like that. I'm saying you've, you've taken profits off for a reason. That's where I would say so at 20.45, I would try to put back uh, in, the, in the very low 17s, or let's look at it together. When it get, If it gets there, let's look at it together. If it misses and it keeps going higher, we'll just have to deal with that. But look, yesterday it didn't act all that well, although it was at the, at the all-time high. And today, again, it made an all-time high, but it's not acting fantastic. So that just says to me, it's getting a little bit tired. It should pull back. It might not pull back to the, to the 17s. It might just go to 1935 and then go quickly to 2220. But I'm saying you asked me the question, that's my answer. I like it, I agree with you. It's holding very well, it's doing very well. Where do you just put back? If you put back three days ago, uh, it, it, the 20.20, let's say you took it out, you don't want to necessarily put it back to 20.20 again. Um, you've got your core position, you want to do it lower down. All right, so let's get out of this, so that's that one. Next thing is, um, I just, I'll just go uh, from questions that I had that have come up uh, in the den and in YouTube. So let me go, FANG is F-A-N-G, FANG is diamond, there it is. This is Diamondback Energy. It's kind of stalling here, making a, a, a recovery high. I'm calling this in the weekly chart a B. And here I could give it a good reason to say it's probably an F, doesn't matter. It's acting extremely well. It's way above the high that was made back in July uh, the 2nd, uh, the week of the 2nd at 102.53, is trading at 110.06 of $1.23. And it has made a peak E, and it's got this pattern that I call the falling axe formation. So what was the question? Can you do FANG? It is true, a true oil stock from the Permian Basin. Yeah, sure. This is a fantastic uh, stock. It has been going from the 10s, or let's call it the 13s, all the way to uh, 113s. This is just spectacular. But you see this pattern here? I like to draw this in. And very often it'll pop above and then kind of come back in. So let's look at this. This is the falling axe formation of the miniature one. Uh, boom. It's still right there. I like this, but my... My guess is that some of these oil stocks are just a little bit overbought. I wouldn't say very overbought. I'm just saying a little bit overbought. And this is almost the same as the stock we were looking at, A-A-E-H-R, that we were looking at a moment, just chart-wise, not what, what it does, but chart-wise. And I'm just going to suggest that if there is a pullback, it should hold very nicely in the 100 and 102 to 98 area. If it starts to trade three days out of two out of three days below 97 at any point between now and the end of the month, that says, all right, the tiredness is going to take a, a bit of time in the toll, but not necessarily so much in, in price because there's tremendous support all the way to the 96, 95 area. So I like it very much. Will I buy it right now? 
if I wasn't in any oil, uh, the energy energy stocks at this particular point, this is one of the leaders, I'd say, you know what, you can nimble here, but be prepared that there could be a 10% loss quite quickly because it is a little bit overbought. But yes, it's one of those. So I'm not answering you maybe the way you wanted, other than to say it's acting very well. If at any point it closes on a short-term basis under 103, so 110.19, that's seven points down. That's probably suggesting that it's the weekly is going to have a digestive phase as well. But I, I like it very much. I've missed it a few times. I've been spoken in the den. S&P has mentioned it many times. Um, yeah. The next question is, Basil, could you look at NUS? NUS. Gosh, that's familiar. Uh, NUS is, oh, New Skin Enterprise. So this was a whole thing what, years and years ago. Was this the Ackerman one of those? Or oh, anyway, whatever it is. It's trading sideways um, in a market like this when there hasn't been coincident strength with the general market, but just weakness. I'm saying at 41.29, I don't think, um, let's see, I am in it and looking to add to my position. I'm going to make the suggestion that I sometimes do. I would rather add on strength than on weakness. Why? Because every time it's showing weakness, it's made a new low. So I'd rather see it move higher. So 41.29, first of all, I don't see anything unless there's a news-related item that's going to come across to get this from the 41.29 area into the 43.80, 44.50 area, which is really where it needs to go to say, I've turned the corner. I'm now trying to get back into a buy mode in the weekly because right now I'm in a sell mode. So that's number one. Number two is, the Dow is up 279, S&P is up 24, the IWM is up, the QQQ is up, and this thing is up 3 cents at 41.29. Something's not right, so it's not in the sectors that are being bought right now, so that eliminates it from, from a sector play. So it's an individual stock. Now, if you've done your homework and you think that there's some news that's going to come out or an earnings report that's going to be very favorable, I would still say to you, I would. I personally wouldn't add to it at 41.24, and I wouldn't add to it on any slide. I would only start looking at the potential to add, and this is this is tough for me because as a percentage, at 41.88 is one and a half. That's already getting to two and a half, three percent higher. But really, you want to see it close on a weekly basis above the high that was made on the 27th of September at 42.53. That's the only way I would do it. And then you're buying off the lows, but now you don't know whether it's going to come back into the rectangle. This is a very tough one for me in this particular pattern because I don't see anything yet. So I'm just saying I personally would hold off. We can look at it again maybe Tuesday. Okay, folks, I'll be back in a moment. 287 points up in the Dow, 25 points in the S. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, you're back. I just want to refine what I was saying about NUS. And, and oh, incidentally, the fan question came from YouTube, not from the den. <clears throat> um, NUS, which is a new skin uh, enterprise. What I, I wanted to mention, and then I, I don't know why I didn't actually mention, is I love the way that the MACD has been running sharply for about a week and a half. And the stochastic, I didn't like the on balance volume, which has been very weak. But the relative strength, I didn't see that is also. So I'm going to modify that a little bit. You've got your position. The way I would do this, since you obviously have done your homework, is that if you want to add, keep your core. You say you've got a position, so keep that position. If you want to add something right here at 41.58, this is the part that I would do. Why? Because if it does manage to get to the 42.50s, you're already in it, and all you have to do is raise your stop. Why? Because... I see now that the um, nine period moving average pink is in fact running quite nicely. So price, it's in a rectangle. It can stay here for a long time, but risk reward, I'm sure you're looking at it that way. I would suggest just add a little bit more to that position. This is the trading position. And this one at 41.53, I'd probably say 30, a 1% risk, 40 cents, 41 cents. I think that's, that's worth it. Why? Because if it actually picks up, then you're in the trade, unless it gaps down, and I think all the gapping has been done with this one. It's really a trying to build a base, and that's really what you're looking, I'm sure, at as well. So AAL is the next one. Uh, Basil, I'm short AAL, and it did a Harami yesterday. Can you give me your opinion on this this page? AAL, there it is. So now this is a tough one for me. American Airways Group, because you would think at this particular point that the airlines would start to see bookings improving. But the chart suggesting that there's still some hesitancy there. The oil prices are a factor, I think. So if you are short, let's just make it real simple. If, if in fact, there's a reversal to the upside either today or on Monday, and you start to see this trading at 20.32, and it holds there for more than um, an hour, I would suggest to you that although I agree with you that this is looking very poor, just risk reward says be careful because it could have another little pop to the 2070, maybe even 2080 area before we have to make another decision to say, okay, is that done now? Because the MACD is really weak, the cash is terrible at 9%, bond balance is not good. The, the pink nine period moving average is way under the 14. So I think you're right. But I would have, let's see, I think that's maybe a little too tight. But I'm just telling you what would, what would allow it to go higher. And it's up 39 cents at 20.03 American Airlines. Uh, AAL, 20.03, up 39 cents. Just being short in this particular market right now, wow, that's, it's just a little risky, only, only in trends just in terms of the trends. So 
I would do that. I'd have a fairly tight stop. You can always come back to reshort. The weekly chart looks like it wants to go down. I, I agree with you. The fact that it's moving a little bit with the market right now says you go and it did gap to the upside says you just got to be a little careful shorter term. So what I would do is this: if by Monday it has not gone above 20.20, .20, it's at 20.02 right now. But in fact, it closes somewhere around this level at this this moment, 20.02, or preferably under 20. I'd keep that position. But Monday, Tuesday, at the latest, you want to see it slide into the 1950 area. And I know that you would like to see it. You'd like to see it. it doesn't have to close, but it needs to get under 1953, the lower three days ago. And that says, you know what, dreaded H pattern, or inverted V, really good chance that it's going to go deeper down into the 1910, 1860 area. That's the way I would deal with it right now. Hope that helps you. FXI, FXI is trading now. This is the China. You see, this is what you, you can't read and expect everything to follow what you read. Look, FXI, strong move up. It is making a potential arch formation, but it has gone a tad higher than the 50 period moving average. And I just wanted to double check here the lowest 37.46 and 37.48. I thought that was the low. So now I have no choice because the stochastics at 87 and the MACD is good to say that the uh, large cap China ETF, FXI, is in leg C. It's like down like many of the others. It started leg C. And that means the daily is probably in a buy signal to buy mode and it can go a little higher. You can even go to it's at 40.82. Yeah. It can go. That'll be a weekly. If the weekly, by the end of the day, if this thing climbs to 41, it's at 40.82. That's the first time that it's gone above the nine period moving average in weeks, months, actually. What would that level be? 41.02. 41.01 uh, is the nine period moving average. Last time it was there, it was just there for a day. We were closed above it, a, a, a week anyway. And the week of the 26th of June, back in the 47th, and the peak D high of the 19th of the week of the 19th of Feb, over 54.33. That, that's a huge move down to the, uh, what did I just say that was? 36 something area, uh, 37 area. So this is a counter trend bounce. I, I, that's all I'm treating it as. Now, AA, Alcoa. You know, this is one that I wanted to buy. We've owned, look, I, I hate to say this. I'm kind of embarrassed, but I'm going to do it. Uh, we belong. We were long this way back. Let me just try to find it if I can find it. We were long. We were long. I love this way back. Started along at 13.07 13 uh, back in November of 2020. Started another small long at 12.84. We added it to 12.53. Um, and we took tiny, tiny little losses. Uh, <laughs> that was in the 13th, but it did drop. It did drop down to, uh, now wait a minute, 2021, 2020. Oh, that was after the low. Oh, and then it had this sudden pullback, and then it just moved up, and that was it. It was done. It never, it never went back to that level again. So Alcoa is doing, uh, it's fantastic. Uh, this is aluminum. See, this is part of the, the the, the economy getting back again. And if that's the case, then we're going to have to have really bad news to see the lows, the most recent lows taken out in the market. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying this is a really good counter trend move. And it might not be called, I might not be able to call it a counter, a counter trend move next week if it continues rallying like this. We might have seen eight, I'm still not sure it's the low. But uh, there were bad news events all over the show. Oh, I've got to show you this. Remember, I talk about, there it is, the dark news cloud cover. And I talk about this big arch formation. Sometimes it's a small arch, sometimes it's a big arch. Look how long. This is the second one that we've got of the, since the high that was made back in uh, August, August the 16th in the Dow, it made an arch formation failed and took out the left side low and did the one to one that is the expectation of the uh, dreaded H pattern if it really fails. And then we had another one with successful tests without going to the previous low. And now we're at a, a, in the rectangle, we've just popped above it. So I have to consider that this is an important uh, phase in this correction. 
and that you can't deny that the market is acting extremely well for the last two, three days. I'll be back in a moment for the last segment. We'll be back as a chapter type. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the target first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly on secured high-value buildable properties in St. Petersburg Florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Well, the last segment, and don't forget, uh, go, to my, uh, front, go to the front page of TFNN. You'll see my... Uh, live webinar coming up at four o'clock on tuesday looking at what could happen for the rest of the year in the market what we're looking at why we've already begun to look at certain sectors as buys and we might add to those positions what is under the radar what can work and what what is definitely not working and that's going to be really important so just real quickly a question lmt uh yes did that one-to-one -one we were talking about, it is at the 200 period moving average. That's Lockheed Martin. That's done exactly what we had described right here. Magdi's good stochastic's favorites at 92%. So Lockheed Martin, uh, what was the other one? Was Goldman, uh, not Goldman. This is, uh, um, this is General Dynamics, which we are long from the 199 area to 207 right now. It's doing very nicely, but it is leg D. Got to watch it closely. Uh, Syntas. Syntas uh, is in leg B in the daily chart. This is a really put it together with the economic aspect. Yeah, this is a good sign that Syntas overalls uniforms uh, rentals. Uh, this is this is great. Uh, one more. Oh, Marriott. Uh, Marriott is that a good? Oh, look at this. Almost at all-time highs. Pretty much at all-time highs. C D E F. Wow, look at that. Very good. So that's Marriott uh, hotels. There is a lot here that's going right. 
as well as a lot that could, in fact, uh, become a real problem. So a question yesterday was on VZ. It was, no, it was AT&T. VZ is acting well. Is AT&T acting? Yep, AT&T has bounced a little bit. That's what we were looking at yesterday. It's real tough, but just as a quick trade, we had said maybe that could move. So, folks, have a wonderful weekend. Uh, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. Check out the front page for my webinar coming up on Tuesday. And, and please send me at basilchapman at tfnn.com. Send me your questions that I'll deal with on Tuesday. That's, that's all very important. And stay tuned. You've got Larry Pesavento coming up. You've got uh, Think or Swim, Steve Rose being recorded this morning, replayed, Dave White, and then Tom O'Brien. Have a wonderful weekend, and uh, see you on Monday.